thank you for tuning into this podcast of New Jersey Revolution Radio's NJRR Live with Diane Moxley. This week, going out on www.njrevolutionradio.com and everywhere you get your podcasts, Corey Lewis T. talks about how he is still seeking justice for Jameek Lowry in Patterson, New Jersey. Network. So we appreciate you tuning in this week um, for a very special guest. Before we get to that, I do have to do one thing. We, we've, we've started to connect with some small uh, uh, businesses uh, owned by people that are, are struggling to make ends meet, and we have a good friend of the show down in South Jersey, um, and she started what she calls the Quick Queen Service. So I know, Diane, um, you, you've done notary before, right? I put your microphone on there. You, you've done notary services and things like that before. It comes in handy, right? Especially when you Sure, do. sure. Yeah, I can do that as an attorney. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and, and, and so down south, um, you know, if you're, you're, if you're being able to provide for your family, it's an honor, but it does get hard. Um, so Ray writes that she's personally shed tears, uh, feeling overwhelmed, trying to balance life evenly, and no one should have to go through that alone. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you call Quick Queen today at 609 782 0370. She has senior discounts, notary services, and she can be a helping hand if you have some errands to run, if mm-hmm. you have a bank thing to go, you know, run around the corner or whatever, give her a call and she'll help you out. I can tell you, we all know. Um, her story and uh, and how hard she's worked um, and uh, to, to build this business. So we appreciate it. And if you do give her a call, make sure you re- uh, mention New Jersey Revolution Radio, and I'm sure she'll give you the best deal possible. So What areas of New Jersey is that? South Jersey. Anywhere? Anywhere below exit 100 for me. Okay. Because it's South North Jersey. <laughs> And then it's South Jersey, and I don't give a damn if people think there's something in between. No, there isn't. I don't isn't. care. There's no. not. Okay? No. There's We're not. not that big. So if you're in yeah, South Jersey, if just... you're not sure if you're in South Jersey, <laughs> call Quick Queen and, and ask her, me. and she'll let you know if you're in South Jersey, and she okay. can help you out. All right? So it's great. So she does many different right. small jobs. Notary services. Notary, notary service, small jobs. Absolutely. But if you need a helping hand with some, some errands, some paperwork, something like that, give her a buzz and see if she can help you out. Excellent. All right. Diane, thanks a lot for being here tonight. Uh, Corey, appreciate you uh, being here as well. And uh, now, everybody, uh, New Jersey Revolution Radio Live. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. And I just want to do one fast plug before we get to our special guest this evening. And that would be for next Wednesday, April 17th. It's Extinction Rebellion in New York City at City Hall Park. It's a morning event, so if you don't plan on doing civil disobedience, you could just take half a day off from work for our North Jersey folks. It is at City Hall Park, so if you take the PATH station, you know, it's just a few blocks away from the uh, WTC station. So everybody come down. I'll be there. I think we might have another friend or two from Revolution Radio, hopefully doing some live streaming. Uh, So come on down. That is Wednesday, April 17th from 9 to 11. If you need more information, go to xxr.nyc. There's also a Facebook event page if you were to search Extinction Rebellion NYC. Um, And now uh, our special guest I'm so glad to have with us this evening, Corey Lewis Teague. Yes. So you are the leader of the Patterson chapter of the new African Black Panther movement. Yes. And you've been a special rights activist for almost 10 years now. Special education, yes. Oh, yes. Special education rights Mm -hmm. activist and a community activist for over 20 years. Exactly. And you're a voice for the voiceless in Patterson. And I know we've been having some... Some really rough, heavy stuff in Patterson going Indeed. on. Indeed. Um, so this goes back to January 5th. So yes. this evening we're going to be talking about Jameek Lowry. Okay. So if you want to give our viewers, I know a lot of us um, from Revolution Radio mm-hmm. and a lot of my comrades have been going to the actions in Patterson around this event and even mm-hmm. offering court support Right. for um, 
the arrestees from one of the nights of action. Oh, right, the second night. The right. second night. Right. Um, so why don't you give our viewers who are less familiar with the case a little bit of background? So going back to January 5th. Right. Okay, so on January 5th, a young man, 27-year-old um, African-American uh, by the name of Jamie Lowry, walked into the Patterson Police headquarters at 111 Broadway and he was trying to get some assistance. He, you know, began to feel like there were some issues and basically there were some people out to get him, you know, some very corrupt officers. And he made it very plain on his live video that if something happened to him, that those officers did it. He was extremely upset. Mm. And, you know, long story short, he ended up shortly thereafter beaten, uh, you know, badly bruised and, and of course, dead. Mm. Uh, the city administration attempted to throw off the community by saying, oh, he might have had um, uh, meningitis. You know, they, they put out this particular mm. scare, which the media, mainstream media, picked right up on, mm. um, which I still to this day don't believe that he even had that. But nevertheless, <clears throat> no illness like that would cause a broken eye socket and mm. uh, broken bones in his face and bruises and contusions and so forth. Mm. So... From January 5th, because I think this is day 94, mm. um, we yeah. have been fighting for answers for the family, justice, as I said last night at the council meeting, that we are calling for, um, you know, not just an investigation, but an arrest, um, prosecution, sentencing, conviction. You know, I mean, we there's a lot of things going on in the background. One of the officers that I believe is involved with this particular case is feeling the pressure from some of the information that I've heard um, from various sources. Um, but we need more than pressure right now. We need either one of them to come forward and just say, look, this is what happened. Or we need, you know, the FBI to come in, which I do believe they're in Patterson now, investigating various incidents as the recent one with the mm. um, illegal arrests stopping people they had i think it was five officers well seven now mm. they had like a ring going within the police department full ranks they had a general and wow. a lieutenant and a whole ring where they would actually arrest people okay even as as early as last night we we found out which i didn't even know that the one of the councilmen in our town his mother was stopped by one of those same officers that were arrested recently by the FBI wow. some time ago mm -hmm. for the same type of situation. So this, this was a thing that they had going. Mm. And so between that, because somehow I feel like there's a connection between those officers that they caught and the situation that happened with Jameek. I think that there's, there's a, a tie in there somewhere. So what we're doing mm. is we're trying to get the folks to come out and put pressure on the government, put pressure on the city mm -hmm. to bring in the FBI and go ahead and just do what they need to do. Because the family, like I said, is 94 days. Yeah. And the family hasn't seen, in terms of answers, nothing. Nothing at all. No answers. And I no. know there was supposed to be an autopsy report released. So right. it's 94 days. Right. No autopsy report has been released at this point. There are some from... things with the independent autopsy, but okay, I can only speak a little bit about that because they really want the attorney for the family to bring some of that stuff out. Sure. So, but that's why I said last night at the council meeting, before this stuff comes out, it would be nice for the mayor to come out ahead of it and just say, you know, do something or bring the, the officers. Because you have... The police officers that were in the ambulance, mm -hmm. the squad car that was behind the ambulance, mm. you had the EMT workers. They had to see something. There was yeah. no code called on the way to the hospital. They say he was unresponsive on his way to the hospital. So why wasn't the code called? To have the hospital right, ready. Code blue or whatever. So yeah. everybody would be positioned. None of that took place from what we understand. Wow. They don't want to release the footage. The prosecutor's office removed the cameras from across the street from the precinct okay. the same night. And think wow. about this now. They took his cell phone, took possession of his cell phone. He wasn't under arrest. He wasn't under any investigation. Why they need his cell phone? Do they still have his cell phone? I believe so. I'm not 100% sure. I believe but so. But we know that they took it. Right. And, and we... their first priority should have been Jameek's health. Right. That should have been the priority, not grabbing his cell phone. And in and, and back of my mind, I believe that they might have thought he recorded them. But he didn't live stream. Uh, See, I got a feeling they were going to try to get in there and erase it before he got a chance to actually... But he was actually live streaming at the time. I don't think they knew it. 
Okay. Because I think if they realized that, they would have done something different. So because you see them in the live stream just kind of leaning over to the side, relaxing, not even taking an interest wow. in, in, in what this young man is saying. He needed help. Yeah. They were saying, okay, he's foaming at the mouth. Okay, well, if you know or you have a feeling that your life is in imminent danger, you're mm -hmm. going to be stressed out as well. Your body's going to go through, you know, you're going to have different things going on with your body just because you're 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 <clears throat> um, aggravated, you're agitated because you know something bad is coming. Sure. Imminently. He might have been panicking. Absolutely. He might have, yeah. So to say that, oh, he might have been paranoid, it's a little bit deeper than that. He was terrified because he knew that there was something bad getting ready to happen. Mm -hmm. And he kept saying it. He said, Ma, I love you. Um, he said, you know, they're going to kill your baby boy. Mm. That he was saying things like that. There's something called in the legal world, mm. in, the, in the court of law, there's something called a dying declaration. Mm. Where somebody know they're getting ready to die. They make some statements, even, you know, even on death row. They mm -hmm. have you make this dying declaration. Mm -hmm. If you have anything, any last words. He said, he, he said, Ma, I love you. He, he, he apologized. He said, Ma, I'm sorry. Ma, mm. I love you. They're going to kill your baby boy. And then at the end of that video, he said, okay, you could kill me now. Mm. He knew what was coming. Who in the world would say that? He knew wow. what was going on in the background. Wow. And he we knew. we're just looking at, we can see the live stream. Yeah. I know it's still out there, but yep. it doesn't give everything. It doesn't give what was happening before. Right. And then, of course, it doesn't give what happened after it. Right. Um, now, let me ask you. So we know that there's been this... Um, Fed's investigation on this police corruption. Were mm -hmm. any of so? Just to step back a moment, were you saying that some of these officers may have been I, around at the time or that the part incident? Of that, yeah, part of that organism. And because, it could be larger if it was right, five officers. Right. Those are the ones they have evidence of. It right. may have been more entrenched in indeed in this police force if we had five right. that were working together on right. some type of um what would what would it be that they would do they'd pull people over and yeah. extort them yeah. or take their money take things from the it okay. was illegal you know arrests they would pull okay. them over take the money and i mean just recently maybe three weeks ago there was a young lady that reached out to me because her boyfriend got stopped mm. on the side of the road and then they pulled up to her and told her, you know, you give us such such amount of money, we make the charges go away. So they're still doing this. There's wow. a group, and wow, I'm being, yeah. you know, I'm 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 seeing that within the narcotics department, there's a lot of corruption, and that's okay. nationally within the narcotics because yeah. of all of the money and the drugs that's, you know, in the possessions and cars and things. There's a lot of corruption there. Yeah. So, sometimes money disappears. Yeah, sometimes exactly. drugs disappear. Yeah. And then uh, what they're doing when they catch someone with something Absolutely. on them. Absolutely. Um, and now there was also an officer, and I'm not sure the time frame, but there was mm -hmm. an officer who um, was investigated for mm -hmm. beating someone up in the emergency room at the yes. same hospital that Jameek was taken to. Is yes. that correct? Yes. About when was that? Uh, last night, the council meeting, I think they said it was about a year or two ago. But okay. But recently was the actual conclusion of that. You know, okay. and, and, and that one particular officer who was doing the beating, I think he got five years in prison. Wow. The other gentleman that was recording the beating, who smiled in the camera and all of that. Wow. He was sentenced, but he was sentenced to six months in prison. Okay. But they suspended it. I don't you know. Somehow they, they, they are not. They haven't put him in prison yet. OK. They're, they paused on it. So hmm. what I would say, article came out today. So the first thing I okay. said was, well, maybe. The feds have maybe he's maybe he struck a deal with them. Maybe he got with them and said he got more information that he wants to share with them. Because I don't see the else. feds turning their back. You know, when you finally gotten some a conviction on an officer, yeah, and yeah. then just turning your back and say, oh, he's not going to go to prison right away. Where in, yeah. in, in, in the article it says no indefinitely, reason. right? Yeah, so, so maybe he's talking. Yeah, that's the first and thing. And let's on my hope mind. he is, and then they yeah. get more answers. Yeah. And also, I'm assuming that they're like you said that it's really disturbing that yeah. a video camera was removed that was right outside the precinct. Right, right. But I'm also assuming that there's video cameras in the area where the ambulance pulls into, at the hospital. I'm sure there's cameras in the emergency room. Yeah. And, and I, this and I, is not being released to the public right. or Jameek's family. Right. I mean, I can get, I mean, I understand that maybe the inside because of the HIPAA laws, but at least outside or yeah. either 
by the gate when you're coming in. I used to work at St. Joe's in security, so I know that they have cameras on the top of the building that see the ambulance when they come in. Mm -hmm. They have cameras on the side that sees you when you come in the door. Mm -hmm. So that's what we want to see. We want to see the footage of when the ambulance came in, if the lights were even on, if the sirens yeah. were even on, or did they come in quietly? Because there's reports that he was left in the hallway for at least a couple of hours. They, then there's reports that he was brought to the hospital unresponsive. So you could see his condition of if course. we saw that sort of ambulance of course. unloading area. Of course. And um, I actually, uh, um, when I was in high school, I worked on my local ambulance squad. Okay. And there had been an occasion where, uh, you know, we were bringing somebody who did come from a police precinct. Okay. and. Just having general experience of going to a hospital in mm -hmm. an ambulance, you mm -hmm. usually get immediate attention when you're showing up to an emergency room. Of course. Via ambulance. Of so um, to hear that he was in a hallway yeah. and see, just seems, you know, was there something, uh, were they beyond their capacity that evening? Did the, you know, normally there should be a handoff of, you know, ambulance pulls up. Right. emergency staff right. immediately comes and assists the person on the stretcher. And that's usually the fastest way you get attention and care right. is going into through an emergency room right. via ambulance. Right. So to me, it doesn't make sense if he was sitting in a hallway. Mm -hmm. um, and I understand, too, that the prosecutor's office said the hospital records indicated no acute trauma. But he had... Broken eye socket, yeah. broken cheekbone. Yeah. His face was bruised and Absolutely. swollen. Absolutely. Even so how the has the family been able to see the hospital records? Do you know? I'm not sure, but just looking at his face in the casket, the picture that mm. I've been posting, if you notice, they pull the shirt as far up as they can to okay. his chin and then put a bow tie as far up as they can go. Okay. So my, you know, I'm beginning to think that there was some asphyxiation or strangulation as well. Marks. Just because, yeah, they mm. had the shirt. They had his suit so far up. Well, you know, the, the sweater yeah. that they had and the dress shirt and the tie, it was too far up. When I, I mean, I've been to plenty of funerals and they Not have their suit on. Placement. Exactly. It was mm. extremely close to his chin. And that gives me the impression that he was choked to death as well. Well, he's beaten and choked to, uh, at least to unconsciousness. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, even if there was uh, meningitis, yeah. how how did the facial injuries that Indeed. were so obvious that mm -hmm. were not visible when he was doing the live streams right. that evening? Right. So where did they... And he was live streaming... One of the live streams was in the police precinct, of correct? Course. Yeah. So he went from police precinct mm -hmm. to hospital. Yeah. All of a sudden, pretty significant facial injuries. Yeah. And dead. Three months. Right. And th oh, yeah, yeah. Three, yeah. Months, Three months and no answers. Absolutely. I wow. Mean, instead of them coming forward and just giving us something, they're pushing back against the family, like last night at the council meeting. Oh, okay. They're pushing back against the family or, you, you know, after their three minutes. I mean, how can you give them a three minute time limit you know this family you know the situation yeah how 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 why not have a special meeting just for this family for we, so we can address this issue yeah. you know they're not taking very good leadership roles they're playing it safe and mm. that's you can see who's who when you know I mean, the time for playing it safe is not now now is the time to say look as a governing body we mm -hmm. are very concerned about this situation we need some answers about this tonight that's what needs to happen Absolutely. Instead of saying oh, answers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, maybe, uh, um, you know, you know, who knows? Because if we have a police force that has we have some evidence of some yeah. funny business, yeah. maybe we would have some questions with their report. Of course. But have a report. There's an investigation going yeah. on. That's right. Correct. That's right. Besides the autopsy report. Right. right. And there's still, there's no charges, there's that's no the officer that's being looked at. Yeah. And I'm assuming then we know who was in the ambulance. Of course. And we know who was in the car following the ambulance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Right. Uh, two. 
that's the thing. I can pipe in his statements to the city council if you'd like to hear them. Yeah. You okay. Yeah, yeah. Comments on them? All right, because I think they, they're relevant to the conversation. Okay. Cool. cool. Okay. Give me a second. Thank you. I remember how to do this. Okay, cool. Okay, good. You know, anyhow, I'm here. You all know why I'm here. I'm here on behalf of the family of Janique Lowry. This is a case that has disturbed me and disturbed many of our community leaders and activists. And we are calling for the arrest and the prosecution and the conviction of what I believe the officers that were involved, the EMT personnel that were involved, even those folks, if there were folks at the hospital that were involved in Janique's death, we're calling for their arrest, prosecution, and conviction. That's what we're calling for. Um, if you want to say that he didn't die from anything but a sickness, you need to prove that. There were people that came to me, even some officers, well, people in law enforcement say, oh, that picture was from weeks ago. I showed them the picture of him in the casket, and I asked them, is that from a couple of weeks ago? Come on now. I mean, let's be serious. When the first autopsy was completed, that particular coroner was not expecting another independent coroner to show up and take the body to do an independent autopsy. So before everything comes out, Mr. Mayor should come out in front of it and just say, hey, look, this is what happened. We want to keep playing games and playing politics and saying, oh, we can't speak up. If it was one of his kids, the city would burn until he gets the answers. If it was any of your children, you would be standing right here demanding answers. And, and let's stop with what we can't do. When you ran for office, you didn't run on what you couldn't do. When he was at barbecues and parties, no matter what the people asked him, I'll get it done for you. Put me in office, I'll make it happen for you. Can you move? Can you turn water into wine? Absolutely. Put me in office, I'll make it happen for you. That's why you have to be careful of what you ask for. Even the Bible says that with much is given, much is required. And you know, the complete fault can't be blamed on the administration, but it can also be blamed on the voters for constantly falling for this nonsense. We keep falling for the okie doke. And now we're in a position now where we have somebody in office who's not taking a leadership role. And again, look, let the state tell you how far you can't go. Stand up as a council and say, look, there's a community that is crying out for answers. There's a community that's hurting right now. And we need to know what's going on. We need to know what's happening. The other morning I left out of my house, which is kind of funny. I went out, I turned the corner, and, and the director, Jerry Spezio, was there. And he asked me if I was going to run for the school board. And I said, no, I've, I've, I've had my time in politics. I realize that I'm more powerful here than I'll ever be on the other side. Not to say that folks on, on the other side are not powerful, but we have close to 3 million people who watch the live streams every day. And we're getting the word out, and you can guarantee that the world is watching. Of course, 3 million is a very small percentage of the world, but folks are watching. So we got to get this right. But there's going to be repercussions on many levels. Justice for Jimmy. That's what I'm here for, and I ain't going away till he gets it. Thank you very much. Has the city of Patterson given the family any? No, last any night. Deadlines? No, last night, the. Um, the uh, Corporation Council, Ms. Shabazz, pretty much just told the family, oh, you know, we we can't share any information with you or we don't have any information that we can share with you. You know, even if they were to say, you know, look, we can share some information only with the family, so we need to have a closed session so we can talk to the family only. Sure. And not, you know, we just, is just for family. family. If the family chooses to share it, that's on them, but we need to have like a thing. I don't even hear that. I haven't even Nothing. heard that, that the, that the city is saying, let's have a, a sit down meeting just with the family mm -hmm. and try to, to talk to them about what's going on. What was wow. interesting is mm. after the whole meningitis thing, yeah, St. Joe's, the CEO, the vice president mm -hmm. of St. Joe's called me and they into a meeting. I was there with the council president and vice president mm -hmm. and a clergy, one of the clergy from the community. And they talked to us about the fact that even the way 
the mayor went about saying, oh, we're going to get checked to see if we have meningitis was wrong. That was all a lie. So him and the police director, one of the nights when we were rallying okay. in January, yeah. they said, well, we were in contact with Jameek, so we had to go get tested for meningitis. Yeah. That was false. There's no test that you can go get uh, and get straight. So he actually had a camera in St. Joe's in the hospital pretending to be tested for meningitis, meningitis. when there's no such thing. So okay. the hospital was wondering why did he even put that out? They didn't because it was tell him that in right. the hospital. Wow. So he put that out, and as soon as it was, as soon as he was confronted about it, the mother went to the council meeting and confronted him. The daughter went to the council meeting. Matter of fact, mm -hmm. last night they well he wasn't there last night, but they brought it up again. Like, how are you going to go through the community saying, "Oh, he had meningitis"? That's ridiculous. And that, and and, yeah. and you know what? That's also a violation of uh, what do you call it, the HIPAA. The HIPAA is privacy. Yeah. So if they're concerned about privacy, it only uh, apparently matters when it works for them, right? Yeah. Wow. And, and, and now it's and now it it's it has reached the point now where everybody, the family, the community, we are all outraged. We were sad in the beginning. We were sad because of yeah, just, of course. Now it's mm. turning to anger because it feels like the city's just giving us the middle finger. I'll be honest with you. Like the city's mm. like, we're not going to tell you nothing. You know, like what, how far does things have to go before the city says, hey, we got to put a stop to this. Let's get the answers to the family, yeah. the officers that were responsible. Hey, put them out on the front, on the chopping block. Yeah. These are the officers that were responsible. They're going to be prosecuted. This is the EMTs that were responsible. They're going to be fired and possibly brought up on charges as well mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So at least then the family can 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 at least begin to see some justice in that regard. But what they're doing is when the, when, when the family shows up to the council meetings, instead of giving them something, giving mm -hmm. them just, you know, anything mm -hmm. to really tell them what happened. Because it's like when you know something happened and you have a good idea of what happened and who did, you know, mm -hmm. who did it. And then you're being told, oh, we can't give you any answers if we as a community, we're able to gather some information. Mm -hmm. And you are city officials. You have more power than we do. And you're telling us you have no information at all? You haven't heard anything? Yeah, Nobody said sense. anything to you? Exactly. It doesn't make Come sense. Yeah. And, how, and, and for them to not even say mm -hmm. that they're going to reveal yeah. reports or whatever it is the family is requesting, that right. they won't even tell them when. Right. So right now... Jameek's mom, yeah. she has not been given a cause of death of her 27-year-old no. son right. who Out died suddenly yeah. with you know, broken eye socket, yeah. broken cheekbone, yeah. bruised face, mm -hmm. three months later, and she has no answers whatsoever. Yep. I can't imagine. I'm, yeah, I just can't I mean, imagine. I mean, just family. to tell you, mm. tell you how graphic it is. He was he was uh, assaulted in terms of like beaten. His body was beaten to the point where he had a bowel movement and it didn't even exit his body because his stomach and the area around his abdomen was beaten in so much to the point where it literally twisted his intestines. Oh and you telling gosh. me wow. that it was meningitis? No, nah, somebody no. that man was beaten to death, and mm -hmm. he was in the custody. Well, he wasn't even in the custody. He was at the police station. He yeah. went under arrest. He was there at the station to get help. To get help like, and mean, then get transported to the hospital. Right. But we don't know what happened from after the live stream yeah. and at the hospital. Now, where, yeah. Now, some of the research that I've dug up, two of the officers was a young man named uh, Wanamaker, Officer Wanamaker. Okay. And the other gentleman was Michael Vila. You know, and Michael Vila, specifically, that officer has a history of assaulting people that are in in lockup, even though Jamik was in lockup. Yeah. But, uh, there was a video that I, that was, you know, sent to me a couple of weeks, maybe about a month or two ago. Okay. Um, where they showed Michael Villa beating up a lady inside the police lockup. And there were other police standing around watching them and, and not doing anything. The young and he lady, was not charged. Not well. Or he was. What they did was they, they put him on, they either suspended him. They put him anyhow. He, he Somehow he returned back to work. Wow. But the young lady did sue the city and I, you got a substantial amount of money. But why was he allowed to return Turned to work to after that? Yeah. When you look at the video and you see it, you see him pounding this lady in a cell, dragging her into the cell and things of that nature. Wow. So he has a history of being aggressive and attacking people. 
you know, I, I showed my uncle uh, pictures of Jameek in the casket. Mm. And my uncle's a retired NYPD, you mm -hmm. know, detective. And he looked, he told me it looks like he was hit with the bunt of either a, a phone, uh, um, the radio, you know, the police radio. Okay. But he was either hit with the bunt of that or either mm -hmm. like a, a, um, like a blackjack, Billy Club, you know, the sticks that they carry, that they something carry. like that. It mm. looks like it was, it looks more, more than just a fist. It looks like there was some device yeah. that was used. And detectives to, can be good at, mm -hmm. um, right. they're good witnesses. So they're good at catching details. Yeah. So, so he would it, even notice whether it was an instrument right. or a yeah. hand. Right. Or you, fist. you could tell yeah. that the, the indicate, the indi you know, indications yeah. within his face, if you look very carefully, you will see where it almost looks like it's dots or either like round mm. or square something. It has like a shape to it, not a fist. Not a... So somebody was in the back of that ambulance pounding away at him till mm. he was unconscious. And then, you know, St. Joe's is the only hospital in Patterson right now. Mm. So you figure on a Saturday night, it's overcrowded <clears throat> with everybody. If you okay. go there on the weekend, it is definitely yeah. overcrowded. You have people lining the hallways. That could be the perfect storm for somebody who wants to hide something that they did. Just mm. roll the body in the hallway and leave and let it there. It sit. Right. Let him sit. Uh. Exactly. Because you already have other people in the hallway laying in the beds. So that's the perfect cover up. Just leave the body in the hallway. Wow. And nobody will even know. I mean, because if ridiculous. you believe he, it, they're saying he was, he lost consciousness in the ambulance, you would mm -hmm. want to hand him off to the ER. Oh, yeah. Oh, staff. Yeah. That's right. And I got to mention something else. His sister's. Um, mm. The, the detective Jason English with the narcotics, mm -hmm. okay? There was a holiday party, okay? And in that party, there were some folks within that narcotics division who were fighting mm -hmm. because they felt that Jason English had went to the FBI on the department, you know, with the, with the actual bus that took place because okay. he felt like he wasn't getting a big enough cut from oh. the action. From so, the corrupt right. group that got busted so, by the feds. Right. So Detective wow. English, the, the, the lieutenant that he was arguing with, you know, knocked him out at the party because they were fighting because they thought that he had went to the feds. So wow. now Jason English has to find a scapegoat. Yeah. So he throws it on Jameet. And basically, we got to find a way to quiet him down. Or, or he's talking, they're saying he's working with the with the feds and things so of that nature. Wow. So they had yeah. to find something to, they had, he needed to find a scapegoat. Mm. to to use to throw the attention off of him and and unfortunately mm. jameek was the person that they threw the attention on wow okay. so there can be a back story to this of course that we might not ever know because they're not probably going to be digging up that unless there is a federal investigation and that's what we're calling for now i mean yeah. i mean they're telling us that you know they're looking into it and i hate that phrase i mm -hmm. hate that phrase mm. okay I hate that phrase we're looking into it because that means they're clearly doing anything but that. Wow. You know. So so let me ask you um, what is going on now with organizing and trying to because it's it's so hard. It's been three yeah, months. I'm true. sure there's there's burnout and exhaustion, but what are you doing now in Patterson? Um, and what can people do to plug in and help? Okay, well, what we're what we're what we're actually doing now, which is not um, we're not diverting from the mission of getting justice for Jamique, mm -hmm. but what what I'm working on now is putting together a recall, you know, of some of these elected officials, okay. um, with the mayor and several other folks um, in these positions of elected office that are just sitting around doing nothing. Mm. Um, it's time for them to to go. So we're 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 going to figure out. How, how many numbers they have and what numbers that we need to do to get those petitions going, okay. get people to sign them and um, go from there. Because okay. you, if you, if you can't serve um, the people, yeah. you can't serve the people and you don't belong in public office. Yeah. So we're moving in a, in a, in not in a different way, but we want to start saying, okay, let's focus on these elected officials that keep telling us there's nothing they could do. Because when you ran for office, you didn't run on what you couldn't do. Mm -hmm. Whatever they said, can you do that? Yeah, I'll work on it. I'll look into it. I'll do my mm -hmm. best to check on it. I'll, now that you're in office, you're telling us the list, a laundry list of what you can do, that mm -hmm. your hands are tied. We, Our particular form of government under the Faulkner Act, Part D, 
I was mm-hmm. speaking to a friend of mine, Chauncey Brown. Okay. Who, you know, is a former elected official commissioner. Okay. He was talking to me about the fact that we're uh, uh, Faulkner Act uh, Part D, that one of the authorities of the council under that particular um, selection is that they have the power to form investigative committees to run investigations, to see what's going on. They have the obligation and the responsibility as a council to call the mayor to the table, call the police director to the table, to the carpet, yeah. and say, hey, explain what's going on. Why haven't we had any arrests? Like you said, yeah. no convictions, no arrests, no charges, no, nothing, no, no nothing. charges, no nothing. Yeah. Like this is just being swept under the rug. If I was on the city council and I know that that the people, are, they, first of all, the first time they showed up, we mm-hmm. we gonna get something done. That's just like I said last night at the council meeting. Yeah, I said, don't tell us what you can't do, okay? Because yeah, when you ran for office again. Yeah, you didn't tell us what you couldn't do. Yeah. So look, we let the state tell you how far you can go. You yeah. push the envelope as far as you can. Let the state say, okay, that's far enough. We'll look into it because I can almost guarantee you, if those nine council members put the fire on the state and on the process and say, hey, something has to be done. Like they can't tell you what they're not going to do with some statute. No, you listen, we were elected by the people. So we are amenable to the people. Yeah. Yeah. They work for you. Exactly. Yeah. So you're, are you going to try to demand that Mm -hmm. they Mm -hmm. demand an investigation and hold law enforcement accountable? And now I'm sure mayor and council, can ask for the recordings and the autopsy report and the investigation, because there is supposed to be an investigation going on right now by law enforcement on this matter. So you can demand Mm -hmm. that your mayor and council do this. Right. And then maybe are you going to put in with that demand? If not, you know, each of your name is going to go on the, the yeah. recall list. Yeah, because huh, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to come to us mm-hmm. and say that you want our votes. You're asking for our vote of confidence. Yeah. And speaking of confidence, the city council has the power to, to put forth a vote of no confidence in the mayor. If the mayor isn't coming, come, yeah, look, it's not doing his job. Exactly. Yeah. He's yeah. not doing the will of work of the people. Yeah. The council says, Hey, we have no confidence in this mayor and his leadership. I'm sorry. Yeah. Being the mayor, I mean, it's nice to go to barbecues. It's nice to kiss babies. Mm-hmm. It's nice to shake hands. Those are nice gestures. Yeah. That's not your job as the mayor. Yeah. Things like this, this happened under your watch. Under your watch. Under your time. That's like exactly you've right. got to. Don't let this. Yeah. Just don't let this sit. This no. is. This is horrific. Absolutely. I can't. Um. So is there people that because if you're in Patterson mm-hmm. you could um, and people outside of Patterson can help mobilize this demand and then maybe recall is there anything else people can do outside yes. of Patterson are there yes. going to be any rallies yes, coming up there will be. okay they can they can go to our Facebook page is called we demand justice for Jamie Lowry and that's okay. on Facebook they can, they can we demand justice for, for Jamie Lowry. Lowry yeah okay they can, they can Type that in and it'll come up. Okay. And um, they can click, you know, follow and, you know, okay. um, they can join and have their friends and family join and okay. keep abreast because we'll post all the rallies. All okay. the, it's like I said, because the weather's breaking now, it's getting a little mm-hmm. warmer. Mm-hmm. People are going to come out. You know, I mean, the first rally that we did, it was freezing out there, but the people came out. Yeah. So yeah. I'm hoping that because the weather's going to get a little warmer soon, that the people can be coming out because we're certainly not going to die down. Yeah. We're going to keep this thing rolling until okay. we get justice for Jamie. Absolutely. We're not, we're not going to stop. And I made that clear last night. And, you know, I mean, there's things that come up. There's things people say, but we're not going to let that deter us. Good, good. Mm-hmm. And three months is entirely is. too long. It's, it's Let's long. not go another three months. No. We're just we're just wrapping up okay, now. Cool. But, yeah. Um this is this is such I, I can't imagine uh Jamik's mom, Jamik's family that so let's all get out there, go to the Facebook page. Yes, absolutely. Like you said. I know I was at the second rally and that was probably one of the coldest uh yeah, rallies. That but you, there was a great turnout. I think yeah. even that night might have been at least fifty people, yeah, right? That absolutely. second night. It was freezing, but we were out there. Out there. And, yeah. and you know, we're gonna amp it up. 
I know that, you know, like I said, like I did the live video earlier mm-hmm. and I was saying, I know everybody has things that they need to do. Yeah. So we do respect that. But now we got to amp it up because we've been to the council. Yeah. We keep mixing us off. These are elected officials now. The people that we put there are yeah. telling us what they can't do. So when it comes time for them to get reelected, we're going to tell them what we can't do. It's love for you. Exactly. You can't. No. Can't. can't. Yeah. And run people against them. Yes. Uh, justice for. Oh, yes. That is. That's the yes. Facebook page. Yes, Excellent. we demand justice for Jimmy Glory. Yep. Is okay. there any way that we can demand action from the state, from Governor Murphy, right. from the AG's office? Has that well, been going on? Governor Governor Murphy, we are trying to push him on a, on a, on a how can I say this, uh, paper trail. Like I've been sending emails okay. into his office. Okay. Um, some of them we get responses, generic responses. Okay. Thank you for your email. But I'm trying to find a way to get to him directly because he comes to Patterson. Yeah, I think but, he's coming soon. Yeah, again. Right? Yeah. Yeah, again. He's in Patterson and he doesn't okay. even attempt to say, let me find the family, let me reach out, let me talk to them. Not talk. Like not. nobody wants to drop the hammer and say, look, everybody that was involved needs to be brought in immediately. And we need to start taking names and and and, and getting this because there's no yeah. charges. How can it be 94 days later and no charges? No charges on anybody? Yeah. What are their statements? Mm-hmm. There must have been statements taken. Exactly. Share those. Get them out. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Corey, for coming on our show this evening. And um, you know, all of all of us, I know, will will be out there with sure. you and. Um, uh, we have to have justice for oh, Jamaica. Oh yeah, absolutely. And we can't stop until we get it. That's true. Right. That's true. We're gonna keep. Yeah, we're gonna keep plugging away. Okay. Told them last night that you know the council. I can see some of them were a little frustrated by, but I don't care. We're gonna keep pushing. Every meeting. Yeah. We will be a yeah. thorn in their sides. Yeah. Everybody will absolutely. until absolutely until there are answers. Can't go yeah. another three months. Mm-hmm. Nope. Well, thank you so much. And I probably will be seeing you out there at one oh, of yeah. those rallies. Indeed. Okay. Yep. Thank you. All righty. All right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to New Jersey Revolution Radio. Uh, we'll get this podcast out as soon as we can. We'll clear up that audio feedback issue. Sorry okay. about that. Cool. Okay. Like I said, we're still putting in the new stuff, and every once in a while, okay. it squeaks. But uh, the podcast version will be cleaned up, and we'll get that out as soon as I can. We have a lot more going on to support activists. You can visit it all at www.njrevolutionradio.com. And we'll see you out there at uh, hopefully these rallies real soon. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for listening to New Jersey Revolution Radio on the web at www.njrevolutionradio.com.